now we'll go over to the next chapter of our talk about analytic placement. And again, this section is heavily based on Rob Brutenbars from Logic to Layout. So here's the analytic lay placement approach. Um, we start with the question, can we write an equation that the minimum of the equation is the placement or the optimal placement of the algorithm? Let's make take this down a step and say if we have a cost function such as wire length as we looked at before, and the cost function is a, a, a is a function of the gate coordinates. So for each gate, we have a coordinate x, i, y, i, and then we can um, we can describe the total wire length uh, uh, as some sort of function of all the x's and all the y's of all of our gates. If we had that, then we could just um, find the minimum of f, and this would be our optimal placement. That's a, a tough thing. Um, it kind of sounds crazy, but yes, we can do it. Um, all the modern placers nowadays are based on analytic placement. And uh, the way to do it is we write the cost function in a what we call a mathematically friendly way. So we'll change our cost function so it will um, adhere to this type of an approach. And then we can just differentiate by x and by y, um, equate to zero, and we'll find the minimum of the entire equation. So let's rewrite our cost function um, to make this uh, mathematically friendly, as I call it. And we'll use a, a cost function called quadratic wire. So the quadratic wire length is basically um, the, uh, the, the the line here, the distance between two points or the distance squared. So uh, we take the points and we say um, x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus my, y2 squared. So if we look at this gate, um, it's uh, at 1, 4, and this gate is at 3, 1. So what we would do is take the difference in x's, so 3 minus 1 squared, and uh, add that to 4 minus 1 squared, and we get a um, total quadratic wire length of 13. Okay, so this just is a kind of a, a, de a definition of the, again, the, the distance between two points squared, but this is a two-point net, and that's a simple representation, and that sounds like an okay thing to describe the wire length, but what happens when we have more than two points in it? So if we have a k point net with k being larger than two, for example, this gate here that has a fan out of three, uh, giving us a total of four um, nets. And beforehand with the half perimeter wire length, we just put a bounding box around it and it kind of showed this ability to connect the different nets, but we can't really do that in this case. I mean, what, what distance do we take? in this type of a thing. So what we'll do in this approach is we'll make um, what we call a fully connected clique model. So a fully connected clique model means that we'll break up this net that has uh, the mini, the, the, the high fan out into mini nets with point-to-point uh, -point nets. So each of these gates now connects to each of the other gates in, uh, in the fully connected clique model. And that gives us quite a few nets. Um, and, uh, but each of these nets, we can um, calculate the distance between um, the two gates that are connected on the net. Okay, the problem is that we get a, a total of k times k minus 1 divided by two nets. That that makes a much uh, larger, that makes a very large effect for having a high fan out on our net. And it's probably not a true effect. So what we'll want to do is we're going to weight this, weight each net, make each weight be worth um, less than it was before. And we'll take as our weighting factor this um, just a, a 1 divided by k minus 1. So um, for example, in our in our example here, our k is four because there are four nets. So one divided by k minus one is a third, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to take each one of these things. Like for example, here we have um, four minus one plus uh, plus five minus four. Um, each of those squared, we're going to uh, multiply that by a third. So a third times four minus one plus five minus four squared, and we're going to do that for each and every single one of these nets and we'll get a total sum of the six weighted two-point lengths. Okay, so the, this weighting factor, it reduces the effect of each additional um, uh, fan out or each additional um, net in the clique model on the total wire length. Um, there's one last point here that each of these gates are dimensionless. This will be important for us uh, uh, later on. And I want to mention something else. Uh, we're going to show you how analytic placement gives us an optimal solution. But um, 
Remember that there is uh, almost no such thing as optimal in the world of algorithms. And here too, we have different things that are heuristic or that come in and, and remove the optimality. So one of them is this um, cost function. Is the quadratic wire length cost, fu uh, cost function the real thing we want to optimize? And that's a good question. It, it's good enough. I mean, that's what's been shown in research over the years, but it, it probably is not the most optimal thing for every type of system or every type of uh, chip we want to make. Um, another thing is this weighting factor. Is the weighting factor of 1 divided by k minus 1 the right weighting factor? And that's a good question. Um, uh, there is no good an there is no true answer for it, but it has worked well enough in research. So now let's give you an example of how we do this calculation, just a, a numerical example to see how it's done. So we have in our model, we have our fixed pads. So there's one pad at 0, 0 and one pad at 1, 0 0.5. And we have um, two gates uh, that are somewhere. Um, this one is x1, y1. Okay, and this one is uh, x2, y2. That's the location. The location is a parameter, and we're going to find what our optimal location is for it. And um, we also see that the, the each of the nets uh, uh, has a, some sort of a weighting. So like the weighting before was just a third on all of them, but uh, we just wrote here for the example different weights. So this uh, net between the pad and uh, and pin number one and uh, gate number one has a weighting factor of one, but the net connecting gate number one and two has a weighting factor of two. So how are we going to um, uh, calculate the coordinates, these x i y i coordinates? Um, what we're going to do is we're going to use our qu quadratic wire length, and we're going to see here. Okay, so if we take uh, the net between these two guys, it's just x2 minus x1 times the weighting factor, uh, squared times the weighting factor, plus um, y2 minus y1 times uh, squared times the weighting factor. So that was uh, simple enough. Um, we can also do the same, we must also do the same thing for the nets uh, that are connected to pads or pins. And these pads, they have a constant uh, placement. So uh, for the um, for the for this one here, what we're going to do is we're going to take x2 minus 1 squared times the weighting factor, which is 4, and y2 minus y uh, my, well, minus 0.5 squared times 4. So that gives us this. And the same, same thing we'll do over here. We'll take um, x1 minus 0 squared times 1 and y1 minus 0 squared times 1. And we'll get to that as well. Okay. Um, so there's some important things that we want to pay attention to in, in the quadratic wire length. So this plus this plus this is going to give us our um, quadratic uh, wire length, right? And uh, and what we can see here is a few things. If we take these guys over here, they have all the xi's in them. And if we take these guys over here, they have the yi's in them. But there are no um, expressions here that have both x, y, and y, i. And that's really good because that enables us to separate this part of the equation and this part of uh, this part of the sum and this part of the sum and separately differentiate them to find the optimal. Okay, and that's why we are actually using this quadratic wire length type of expression. Okay, so now we are going to use our basic calculus. What we're going to do is we're going to say what's the quadratic wire length uh, of the x part of this equation? What's the quadratic wire length of the y part of the expression? Um, and we just write the sum of this. So this is q of x and this is q of y. And uh, when we write when we write that down, we're going to um, do a partial uh, differentiation by x1 and by x2 by each of the gates um, compared to zero, and that provides us with a with a with a linear equation. So we have this matrix here: six minus four minus four twelve times the vector x1 x2, and that gives us a solution of zero and eight. The same exact thing we're going to do on the y um, on the y part of the equation, and we can uh, easily solve these two linear linear sets and we get um, a some numbers for x1 and x2 and y1 and y2 okay so just to look at this solution that we did as we saw before we found that the coordinates of our gates are x1 y1 and x2 y2 that was what we solved and we can see a couple of things so first of all the placement that we got it really makes visual sense so when we just look at the model over here on the left we can assume that everything will have to be on a straight line because uh, this guy's pulling over here and this guy's pulling over there. Why shouldn't they sit on some sort of straight line with some sort of division between it? And we see in the solution that, in fact, 
um, we do get a straight line here between. Another thing we see is that this guy is pulling strongly. It's a, a big weight. Well, this guy is pulling weakly, and this is a bit stronger. So we could assume that this will be the shortest type of a net, while this net will be a bit longer, and this will be the longest. And we actually do see that here. There's a very short net over here, a bit longer net over here, and a, and a real long net over here. This is very similar to what we call spring weights. So if we had um, two uh, anchors on the wall, which are these uh, pads over here, and we had springs between them, and there are different strengths of the strings, which are the wire lengths we'd get that the steady state of how the strings are pulled are very similar to this type of a thing. If we now would put a weight over here that was connected to, to this guy, I mean a, a pad over here that was connected to this guy, it would drive the whole thing up like that or so forth. And um, so this is the type of thing that we expected to think. This makes visual sense. Uh, larger weights provide us with a shorter wire. That's very important to do type of a sanity check of what we get. Uh, a second observation is looking at the algebra of it. and. There's something real interesting we see. You see this and this? Well, they're exactly the same. Okay, so actually for, for N gates for that we want to place, we get two equivalent N by N matrices, which are these matrices, and we'll call this matrix A. Okay, um, and then we get a linear system that's A, X, where X is the, uh, the, the um, vector of the X uh, coordinates here, and similar A, Y, we get uh, the, the Y coordinates here, gives us some sort of an output vector of B, X, and B, Y. Okay, so that's our linear matrix, and uh, we found that A is this, and B and X and B, Y are that, and uh, just what are these B things? That's the only thing that we, we have to think about. And B, um, these guys are driven by where our actual uh, pads are. So there, there, there's, some, there's some representation of the pad coordinates. Okay, so that was very cool because now we have a, a real way of, um, of analytically optimizing the placement of a, some sort of a, a set. So let's look at a recipe for success of how to do this. Um, something that uh, I'm going to add here but we didn't observe before is that A is actually a, a, some sort of a, a modification of what we call the connectivity matrix. The connectivity matrix, or C because for connectivity, is um, some sort of a matrix that discusses or tells us about what the connectivity between the gates and the pads in our network are. So um, the recipe is like this. For C, uh, uh, at position ij is going to be equal to cji. So we have a symmetrical matrix. And the uh, value in these two places is going to be w for a net with weight w. Okay, so cij equals cji. Um, for net ij um, is going to be the weight between uh, the two um, gates i and j. Okay, um, on all other places, we're going to have zero. So both on the um, on the diagonal and on anywhere where there's no net, if we have gate one and gate two and there's no net between them, we're going to put a zero at, uh, po at position one, two, and two, one in our matrix. We'll see that in a second with a, with a numerical example. Okay, um, so that's this, the connectivity matrix. It basically tells us what the weights are between every pair of gates. Um, so then we can just take our C matrix. What we're going to do is for each um, number we have in the matrix, we're going to put a negative in the A matrix. So negative Cij is going to be Aij. Then we're going to look at the diagonals. So Aii, the diagonal, is just the sum of the row i plus the weight of the net i to the pad if there exists such a net. Okay, so that's what it says over here. Um, if i is not equal to j if we're not on the diagonal we're going to take minus cij minus the uh, connectivity matrix value if we are on the diagonal what we're going to do is we're going to sum up the values of the connectivity matrix and add to it the weight um, to a pad if there's a pad there for b vectors again we said b is some sort of representation of a pad and the way we're going to get them is that we're going to um, for uh, bx, for the x vector of b in the position i, what we're going to do is we're going to take the weight of the um, connection between uh, the uh, pad and 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 the and that gate and gate i times the the uh, x position of the uh, of the pad. Okay, and for weight and for the the y vector, the y pad vector, what we're going to do is we're going to multiply again this weight times the y position. If there is no um, 
connection between them, obviously the uh, BXI and BYI are both going to be zero.